Protecting against malware is a really important aspect of internet security because of how easily malware can spread through networks. So malware itself is just a term for any hostile or intrusive software and this can range from being very benign and just a bit annoying all the way up to being incredibly damaging if it steals personal information or shuts down your system. So it's very very important we have protection against malware and it itself is an umbrella term so it's got several categories, several types often which so merge and we'll look at a few types of malware in a couple of minutes but it's actually sort of encompassed by another umbrella term which is malicious code so it's a type of malicious code and malicious code is just any program code written where you're intending to cause some harm again it could be quite a low level amount of harm or it could be very severe so an example of malicious code which isn't malware to show this is kind of like the overarching uh, topic or uh, term so uh, uh, maybe an SQL injection attack where you're writing an SQL statement to try and steal some data or damage a database that is not malware itself but it is malicious code that is trying to cause harm two terms which come up quite a lot in the formal analysis of malware is uh, attack vector and payload so an attack vector or just a vector is the method malware is using it's it's what is exploiting essentially it's how it's gaining access to the system, how it's being spread and so on. So quite a generic term but it's just referring to the method of how malware is working and this will vary attack to attack, it will vary depending on the type of malware itself. And the payload is a part of malware that actually causes the malicious effects So not all parts of the malware may um, immediately cause an effect. Part of the malware might be to spread or to actually gain access using an attack vector. So the payload is actually the damaging part of it that is gonna cause this hostility or to be intrusive. To link this together then, malware is the, uh, the program and it uses an attack vector to deliver the payload. And just to give a real life example, if we've got a, a, a dodgy looking pop-up ad to supposedly download an update to Adobe Flash, and this may lead to a ransomware. You may download a, a bogus executable file and it will install ransomware on your computer. So here the attack vector is the fake pop-up ad and the payload is the ransomware itself. The, the part of the malware that is installing the ransomware and encrypting the files isn't necessarily the payload, it's this program that's running that's actually threatening you and getting you to pay Bitcoin to decrypt your data. Bad Rabbit was or possibly still is an instance of malware which tricked people by them downloading fake Adobe Flash installers to update Adobe Flash. And ransomware itself is a category of malware which encrypts all your files so you can't access any of your files and then makes you pay money to decrypt them and often it won't decrypt it for you because why would they? And often it's the payment is in Bitcoin because it's untraceable, they're not going to give their you know PayPal account on this screen. So this is the actual effect of this is to lock your lock your computer in other words. So that's a payload of this malware. And the vector is the way they gained access to this. In this case, via social engineering, they used pop-up ads. Ransomware is a type of malware. If we now look at four other common types, and I would say that modern malware is unlikely to fall in just one of these categories. It's gonna contain several aspects to it. It's not gonna be as simple as saying, oh, it's a virus or it's a worm. It's gonna be more complicated than that. But anyway, if we do look at the separate types, first of all, a virus will insert itself into a normal program. This means that the virus code will get merged into the code of a regular program. And this regular program is referred to as a host program. It's hosting a virus in other words. And this means when this program does get executed by you, when you run the program, the virus will run as well. The virus code will be executed. A second major type of malware is a Trojan. A Trojan, or also called a Trojan horse, is a program installed on your computer disguised as desirable software. So you think you're downloading a game or an application, but in fact it's actually malware that's disguised as something you want to download. I'm sure you've heard of a story, I don't know if it's actually true, of the Greeks using a very large wooden horse to hide soldiers and invade the city of Troy. Same idea here, you're disguising some harm with a normal program. The program itself might be quite useful, it might work for a few weeks and then the malware will start to affect the computer. And the actual malware will be one of the other categories, so it could be a worm. Some people like to define a worm as being a subcategory of a virus. doesn't really matter because, as I say, these terms do get mixed up quite a lot. But what a worm does, it spreads automatically in a system and replicates itself. And in particular, it will spread through networks. So a virus 
is usually confined to a system and I don't know if I said but a virus will spread itself into other programs so more and more programs will get infected with virus code so it doesn't just stop once you've infected a single program it will keep spreading but usually not beyond the system a worm will try and propagate itself through networks so it will spend it will send loads of copies of itself through networks and try and infect other hosts if it doesn't manage to infect another host at the very least it's going to use up bandwidth of the network and slow it down Frequently worms won't actually have a payload, they're just there to slow down a network, but sometimes they will contain additional malware like ransomware for example. The final category I want to talk about is spyware, which will collect data about the activities on your computer. And of course it will then send it back to whoever started it, whoever instigated the attack. So a keylogger is an example of this. It will record the keys you type on your keyboard, often to try and find a password or something along those lines and uh, it will get sent back to the person who sent you the spyware. Spyware can of course come via a virus or a worm and in fact some people think that Bad Rabbit, the ransomware, was in fact installing spyware. That was the main purpose of it, to try and find more information about people. But you can imagine that a Trojan would be a very effective method to distribute it as well. You could have a program that's on a computer but it's secretly recording information about you.